Welcome to a cozy painting video. I am so excited for this. I can't wait to paint with you because we are doing something fun today. So you folks have been asking me lots of questions and today I'm going to answer some of them in this video. If you like this kind of thing and you want me to do this more, let me know. But if you feel like creating with me, feel free to grab whatever creative thing you have on hand and let's get started. So since I'm not going to be talking about the painting in the video and I'm going to be answering your questions, I'm just going to prime this video with a little background on the painting. So it's an acrylic painting. It is a picture that I took when I was hiking in Norway over the summer and I'm so excited to finally be sharing this painting. I actually did it a long time ago and I have been wanting to share it for a while. I will have limited edition prints available at mirabyler.com. I also have a bunch of new stuff on my website, including stickers, recipe cards, enamel pins, prints, and more. So if you want to do your holiday shopping or just treat yourself, head on over to mirabyler.com. Okay, let's answer these questions. Some of them are about art, some of them are about life. What is something that you've wanted to create but you haven't yet? This is a great question. Okay, there's two things actually. Can I just share them both? Ooh. Okay, so the first one is a coloring book and I've actually been working on one for the last like year and a half and I'm hoping to self-publish it probably within the next year or two. I'm working through this thing at a very slow pace but I want it to be very high quality and um, just a really special art experience. So you'll see, hopefully I'll get it out one day, but that's one thing. Another thing I want to work on is some painting courses. I have some outlines for ones that I'm hoping to film in January or February. I don't know how long it's gonna take to actually do these courses, but We'll start probably with one and go from there. Anyway, I'm really excited to do some painting courses. So hopefully those come out within the next few months. How do you paint when you don't have inspiration? Ah, uh, isn't that such a struggle? Sometimes I just don't. I mean, I do not paint every day. I'm just being real with you. Um, like if I'm having a bad day and I don't feel like painting, I just don't. <laughs> I don't know if that's helpful, but yeah, I don't. I mean, sometimes I can push through and it's like a learning experience, but there are just some days where it's like, yeah, it's not worth it. <laughs> By the way, if you want to chime in and answer these questions for yourselves, I would love to hear what you have to say too. I think the art community is just a really beautiful place and I love learning about you folks too. So um, I'm curious how you folks will answer this question. How do you do any creating when you're not inspired? I would like to add that not creating is a way that I have grace with myself when I'm not inspired. I think in today's hustle culture, sometimes we can feel guilty for not producing or being productive, you know, but if you just don't feel inspired, I do think it is okay. Something that I have been focusing on this year is rest and rest is good. And I know it looks like I'm not resting because there's tons of videos going up right now, but those were filmed way in advance. <laughs> so there you go. Ooh, a lot of people are asking me what my favorite art piece is from this year. Ha! <sighs> I think my current favorite is the raccoon. I just painted it like 
a couple weeks ago and it's wearing a cute little sweater and everything. I can put it up here on the screen, but I really enjoyed doing that one. And I think there's just a lot of symbolism from my life behind the raccoon, like on the wall. And that felt really special. It was like this made up piece that actually meant a lot. So that's probably my favorite for the year. What is your favorite arts or crafts store? I love Blix, hands down Blix. I love Blix because nowadays I feel like I'm not like testing tons of art supplies. I really know what type of art I enjoy. I really know what type of supplies I enjoy. And I think Blix is just a store that doesn't have a lot of fluff. Like there's not a ton of like gimmicky stuff around you that you would be tempted to buy and try. It's just like high quality art supplies and beginner art supplies. You get what you need, you leave. It's perfect for somebody who doesn't like doing a lot of shopping, <laughs> which is me. Who are some of your favorite YouTubers? Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to answer this question. Okay, so my favorite type of YouTube videos might be surprising to some people because I don't actually watch a lot of art YouTube videos. I really like the outdoorsy gardening or just living off the land or exploring videos, you know? So my favorite channels are Simple Living Alaska. That's probably like my number one favorite channel. It's this couple who lives up in Alaska. They do gardening, they do foraging, they do so many cool things, so many cool things. Um, definitely recommend them. I also really like Roots and Refuge Farm. Cecilia Bromdahl, who lives in Norway, by the way, I love her. She does lots of videos at this time of year on Polar Night, which is so interesting. Highly recommend her channel. And then I also like Whispering Willow Farm. Um, Roots and Refuge and Whispering Willow, they're both friends, they know each other. They both used to live near each other in Arkansas. Um, now they don't, but um, they are very inspired from each other, and that's pretty cool. They're gardening channels. Those are my favorite channels. I do also like studio vlogs for art channels, like because I am a small business who runs a shop and stuff too, it makes me feel super motivated to see like other artists packing orders and stuff. How are you doing today? I hope you and your family are well. I am recharging today. Like this is a pretty restful day. I slept for like 10 hours last night. Um, I have a cold right now, but I feel a lot better today. So I am grateful for that and that's how I'm doing. Another person asked, how do you find joy in the process and not the result? So a big way that I changed how I look at art and how I look at creating was to take my mind off of the result and think about the process more. And it made art so much more enjoyable for me. So when I approach a canvas or a piece of paper, I look at it as like, I have solitude right now and it's just my art in me. And that can be a really special thing because I can use it to process what I'm feeling. I can use it as like a time of prayer or worship. I can use it just to have silence and enjoy the silence or I can watch other movies or videos or listen to audiobooks or whatever. But the process, when I think about it that way, like I'm creating for the sake of creating, let me process my emotions while I'm at it. It's a very liberating thing. Um, it gives me a lot of peace and helps me sort out the chaos in my own life. And so when I approach a painting with that sort of mindset, I just feel like it makes me thankful that I can even create and slow down in that kind of way. It's kind of hard to explain it though, but it's definitely helped me have a lot of grace with myself as an artist and like how a piece turns out isn't necessarily as important as the things I sort out in my own heart when I'm painting or what my intentions are for the painting is more important than the result sometimes too. Like if I go into a painting and I have joy in that process and I create it, for a specific reason, like, like usually when I do like flower fields and bouquets and stuff, I want another person to look at that and feel 
so joyful and peaceful. And if I, if I go into it with that intention, it just means something else to me than starting a painting specifically for the result. I think when I personally approach a painting for the result, it creates more stress and I'm harder on myself. I criticize it as I go. Whereas if I create it to be like, huh, I'm sitting down and I get to create right now. This is beautiful. It, it creates a whole different atmosphere and mindset for me. So it's probably a really long answer, but I hope that's helpful for you folks. And I encourage you folks also to just remember to have grace with yourself when you're creating. And I think everybody needs a creative outlet. That's another thing that I think about when I'm creating is like, especially if the camera is on, like I am doing this for my own personal creative outlet. But now people are watching me have this creative outlet. I want them to know that they can have that too. And that is such a beautiful and important thing to me. Well, I think that's gonna be all the questions for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want me to do more Q and A's in the future, I definitely am happy to do that. So thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this painting too. I really enjoyed creating it with you folks. And <sighs> there's just something about capturing a gloomy day on a canvas that is so special. I feel like with a lot of paintings, it's easy to take those sunny, beautiful days and say, this is beautiful. But I think that those gloomy days that are a little underrated are also beautiful. And it was a joy to capture it. Well, with that being said, I hope you have a restful and cozy day. Bye.